All right, um, today we're going to look at the membership, the version 20 membership, and we're going to take a look at, if I can get my screen up here correctly, um, in the people module, in the people function of membership, we're going to look at just the family side of the screen. Uh, before we start though, if it's your first time doing the webinar on your toolbar, there um, are all kinds of things there for you to use. One thing that's helpful is along the side is a red arrow. If you click on that, it minimizes the toolbar down so it's not blocking what I'm showing you. Uh, but then if you need to open that back up, you just click that little arrow. And you also can click the top of that and drag that toolbar to where you prefer it on your screen. Um, pardon my voice. I'm going to the doctor after this. I'm going to go to the Minute Clinic and see. I think I need some antibiotics. I think I may have a sinus infection, so excuse my voice or if I start coughing. Um, Ross is in the room with us, and he is going to answer any questions you might have. That if, if you have a question while I'm showing you the material, you can open up the question panel and type it in there. Um, you might want to hold off until the end. I might answer your question as we're working through the material, uh, but Ross will be answering questions while I'm showing you the material. <clears throat> what we're looking at today, um, you do not need a workbook for it, but if you um, wanted to purchase the workbook that I'm following along on, um, you can find that on our website by going to beginning and going to the training workbooks. And what I am using is from the Membership 101, uh, starting on page 9 through page 21. So if you have the most current workbook for version 20, um, prior versions, the screens were different for the people. It was members and visitors, separate screens. So uh, if you have prior version workbooks, they're not going to look the same. But if you have a version 20 workbook and you want to follow along, uh, or if you want to purchase it, um, those are available on our website, uh, downloadable that you print or pre-printed that we print and bind here and send to you. Um, so take a look there. There's some packages as well. Um, but I do advise, you know, use a little magnifying glass in the upper right and type in keywords <coughs> or check out the support center because that's where we put all our documents and videos. Um, and there's all kinds of free things to help you. I mean, we do want to sell the workbooks, but I always tell people, take a look on the website first. You might find an answer there or something you could print out. There's all kinds of documents that you can print. All right. Without further ado, let's start looking at the people screen. So I'm going to go back down here and open up membership. I already had that open. Uh, just to save time, I opened it by just on the opening screen clicking on membership. <coughs> to access the people screen, this is our membership portal, and this is where we can access all the functions of the membership module. Um, to get to our actual records of what formerly were separate databases of members and visitors, those are all now in one database called People. So if you're coming from an older version of Church Windows, you're, everyone's still in there in Members and Visitors. Um, they are all just now in the one database called People. And to access that, you can click the shortcut right here in the opening screen with the little people on it. <coughs> Excuse me. And that should open our People screen where if you if it's your first look at this don't panic <coughs> it looks a lot different but it's it's very similar to the older program where on the left side we put in family information things that apply to the entire family or the household and then we start adding people or individuals to that household on the right side so that's the same thing and we have the same capabilities it's just what you used to see as buttons across the top. Um, now we have tabs across the family and the individual records. <clears throat> what we're going to look at today though is just this left side. Now notice this bar in between here. I can hover on this and I can drag across and I'm just going to make my left side a little bit bigger since that's really what we're going to focus on today. I don't want to eliminate the individual record entirely because that might throw some people off not seeing it there at all but you can you can change the size of your your family versus your individual record by moving that little bar there all right another thing I want to show you though real quick is um, I access that using the shortcut right here people if in the upper left I click on the word people which if I had chosen something else I'd want to click back on people and then under that the button that says people that takes me to the same place it's just the things in the middle are shortcuts that take you directly there without having to click a word and then a button underneath it. 
And here we have our people screen. Um, if you're following along in the book, I'm going to jump past um, page 9, 10, and 11. They talk to you about how there is a blank data entry form. If you <coughs> go into reports and other, you'll find the blank data entry form. And if you're brand new to the program, we recommend you might want to print that out. And pages 9, 10, and 11 tell you more details on that report. But we really want to focus on the family side today. Um, so that's why I'm going to jump over those pages in the book. Um, top of page 12 jumps right into looking at the actual people screen. But again, if you're brand new to the program, there is this blank data entry form and more information in the workbook or in the program about how you can print that. Um, hand that out to your congregation before you start entering data, and then you'll know you have the, the most current correct data. Um, but it's just a blank form. You can choose what you want on that. All right. But Again, today we're looking at the family side of the people database. So let's look over on the left-hand side. The first thing, if you look up at the very top, we have, let me get my little spotlight to put a little emphasis on it here. Um, right up here we have filter by categories, right up at the top. And <clears throat> we can filter our categories or what used to be members and visitors, two different databases are now in one called people. And we can choose to see our members, or our visitors, or notice right now I just have members checked, and I can say show those selected. And if I look in the lower left of the screen, it tells me exactly what I'm showing, and that means as I hit the little arrows in the upper left, if I go next, 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 we'll see at the very top of the record, it shows the actual families category, whether they're a member or a visitor, and you can make other categories. I'm going to show you that in a second. Um, but as I scroll through these with my arrow, it's simply showing me all my member category people. If I want to see everybody, then I just click filter by category, and I can check visitors, or I could uncheck members if I just want to see visitors. Um, if you've created other categories, then you can choose you know, which one you want or multiple. And then below in the left, it's going to show when I click show those selected. Now we see in the lower left, we are showing both members and visitors as we oh, scroll through our records. So notice here, I hit my arrow in the upper left twice, and the third family I came to was a visitor. <clears throat> so you can choose exactly what you want to see as you go through your records. Um, and it's not you know, permanent by asking to just see members. I didn't get rid of my visitors. It just means as I scroll through with that arrow, I'm only seeing the category I ask for. Um, now we have set it to members and visitors, so we're going to see all members and all visitors as we scroll through. Now if you're following along in your book, I'm on page 13. I'm going to get a quick sip of coffee. Wow, it's already 8 after. Okay, this is supposed to be 20 minutes. This is a lot of material for somebody who likes to talk a lot to cover. So, <laughs> um, well, I'm going to try and stick to the book. Usually I, I throw a lot of other things in and don't stick to the book. All right, so this family's category, it tells us, is visitors. Um, if we want to change it, we don't have to transfer families back and forth. If we want to change what a family's category is, I just click right here and change it to whatever category I like. And that's changed my entire family. Well, I only have one person in this one. But I, with just a click, changed Ms. Karen Bartholomew's family from being a visitor or a member. If I want to create new categories, I just click this little plus, pencil, or minus sign, and this is where I would either create a new one, edit my existing, or delete one. So let's click on that. Brings up a little window where I can see my existing categories. If I want to make a new one, I can click right here and click encode, and we're going to put, we're going to make a category for inactive or what used to be called terminated. Um, and I want to move all of my people who are terminated over into that, what I'm going to call my inactive database. So that's pretty easy to create a new category. Now I think about the different categories you want. Um, if you want to delete a category, you can bring up the little category box and hit minus. Now if the category is in use, it's on people's records or people are in that category, records are, you cannot delete it. The program will tell you. Um, but this one I just made inactive, I could click minus. Are you sure you want to delete it? I can say yes. You just saw me make it, so we know there's nobody that has that code. Um, if I want to edit something, I can go ahead and just click here and make whatever changes I like. I guess 
I was going to try to add an M for members as a code, but that carries over from your old members and visitors. And members, I, I didn't realize you, you can't add a code for them. There will always just be members. Um, but anyone who is in your visitor database carries over with the code of V for visitor. All right, <clears throat> let's go ahead and look at adding a family on page 14. So at the top of the screen, we can see the add, the delete, and some of our little icons. To add a family, we're just going to click add family. And the first thing it asks us to do is decide which category this family will be in. Old program, you would go into members or you go into visitors, and that's what they would be, whatever database you went into. Um, here, in the newer version 20, all in one people database, um, when you're going to add a new person, first thing you have to do is choose their category. So we'll choose members and then click OK. And now we see up at the top, it's, it's grayed out. It's ready for me to create this new member record. Now I'm going to cancel this. Now because I just started, it's already created a record. So if I cancel halfway through making a record, then I actually do have to delete this because it's, it's going to have an empty record if I don't say delete. So I'm going to delete that because I wanted to show you some of the actual information um, on a, an existing record. So if we look at the family record tabs on page 14, you'll notice across the top, just under the category, we see different tabs. The first tab, now each of these, if you think of the old, it had buttons for the different things. Um, here, the first tab is storing the name, the family number that will carry over from your old program. Um, visitors used to start with a 9, and members would start with a 0. Any new records you add are just going to be sequentially numbered, starting with number 1. Um, but your old records will have that old number carried over from the older module, unless you're brand new to the program, in which case your, your family number will start with number one. Um, the, just to the side of that, we have a button called Make Family Inactive. Let me find a larger family and show you. Uh, we'll go back to the three people here. Um, suppose a whole family leaves the church. We could very easily... Uh, click on Make Family Inactive right up at the top. And somebody's asking me to use the highlighter. I can use the highlighter. Um, it's just, I have to go back and forth to use the highlighter and use a clicking tool, so it's going to take us more time. Um, so here we have Make Family Inactive. If I go ahead and click on that, that brings up a little window where I can choose my inactive reason. We'll say they trans or they left the area. It will automatically fill in today's date. I can change that date if I need to, and then click OK. And now notice all the family members are showing in red. And if I click on each record, then over on the right side, on their individual record, we can see each one of them. Well, one of the gentlemen was already marked inactive. He had passed away. Uh, but if we click on Jen, she left area, and Richard, her adult child, also left area. Um, so we can see that one little button on our family record is how we can easily mark the entire family as inactive. And again, that inactive used to be terminated. So let me go back to, here we go. And if we go back to a family that's not marked inactive, you can see that button up at the top. Again, that was make family inactive. So that's an easy way to mark everybody inactive within a family. And people who are marked inactive will not show up on lists and labels and reports and things unless you specifically ask for inactive people on the report. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, I'm going to jump over to page 16. Um, mailing label. If we look, let me erase my highlighting. Uh, mailing label is the next field available. And in mailing label, we're just going to type whatever the family, how they want their mail to be addressed to them. Mr. and Mrs. Nathan Thomas, Nate and Kay Thomas, the Thomas family, however that family wants things sent to them. Um, now, when you put things in, it's preferable you do not use any punctuation. The uh, post office prefers um, no punctuation. 
<clears throat> hence why we don't put a period after the miss or miss mister or missus or anything like that uh, the next thing we're going to add is the address and we can easily add that you don't just type in the box um, to add the address we just click the plus at the end of the line now here we're seeing Ms. Nina let me go ahead and cancel here and we will just do an add family you make me a member so I'm just gonna type in my name is Kellyanne Pierman and then for the address I'm just gonna click the plus at the end of the line and that brings up my address box where I can go ahead and type in the address my zip code and country I already have set up within my um, settings so it's filling that in for me using the one of the church but I could change that if I needed to um, I can also put in bulk mail information if you need to do bulk mail and this is also where if your family has alternate addresses where everyone in the family picks up and leaves for a period of time uh, we can click on family alternate and we can add up to three family alternate addresses not just one anymore but you can add three um, so here we would put the effective month and day from and to and if it's recurring you can put the recurrence here as well um, we can mark family addresses the main address Let's go back here. The main address or the alternate address can be marked as unlisted. Um, and we can also, for any of these addresses, there's a little checkbox to say this is the address to use for statements. If you provide donation statements, um, you can indicate exactly which address on the record, since you can add so many different addresses now, which one is the one to send for a donation statement. It's really nifty. We'll go ahead and say OK there. And now we see my current address is 123 Anywhere Street, Blacklick, Ohio, 43230. So as soon as I added that, we see it on the screen. If I want to edit it, I just click the little pencil. Or if I needed to delete it, I just click the little minus, and then it asks if I want to delete it. We'll say no, because we don't want to actually delete it. And let's go ahead and move to page 17. Oops, I didn't say turn the page. That's where it shows you the family alternate address if you're following along in the book. Um, below that, <clears throat> last thing we see on the first tab with the actual name, the family names, is phone. That would just be the home phone. So we can put in their home phone number. You don't have to put slashes or dashes. When I tab off of that, it adds the, <clears throat> the parentheses and the slashes or dashes for me. Now the family information below, that will show, I'm going to hit save here, and I'm not going to add an individual because we're just talking about the family today, but let's look at a different record. If I hit back once, here we see below the phone number, we see the family information. And all of this information starts showing once we add individuals over on the right side which we're not going to do that that is going to be tomorrow's continuation um, we're kind of having these series of uh, webinars but tomorrow the webinar will be looking actually at the individual side so we're not going to talk about that today but once you start adding individuals that's when this bottom left side you'll start seeing the names ages and family relation if you fill those in um, for each individual you add to the family all right, let's look now. There's tabs going across. Uh, turn my page. Going across. This is a lot to fit in 20 minutes. Um, there's tabs going across the top of the family record. So, whoops, let me get my clicking tool. Um, the first tab is family info. And this is where you can put, if they have another phone, an alternate phone besides, I, I consider this more like work phone. There used to be a work phone. Well, that was on the... In, uh, individual record though so you have another area you could put an alternate family phone multiple places there you have the regular phone here and then we have an alt phone here um, mailing code we can choose here and mailing code is typically how the family wants to receive their mail um, the program I believe comes with the all mailings newsletter only and no mailings but you can create your own <clears throat> mailing codes if you if you'd like uh, geographic area 
usually denotes what area of the church the person or what area of town the person lives in. Last update is filled in by the program. When you make an update to the family record and save it, it would then show us that date. <clears throat> so we see here that it says 3-7. That was the last time somebody made a change. Um, I just added a mailing code to this. So if I hit save, I might need to exit and come back. Let's see. If I exit and come back, we should see that change. It might need be that I need to exit and come back in, but this should show a last update. Let's see if we go out and back in and find the peaks. <clears throat> So I'm going to use the person lookup up at the top just to find that individual. Now if I click on his family info, hmm, I'm not sure why that didn't register the, the last update since I just, I thought I just changed that to all mailings. I could have sworn that was blank. But again, I'm sick today, so maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. Um, but these fields that are kind of grayed out, last update, last update by, date created and created by, those are filled in by the program, um, reading it from when you updated, reading it from your login, who actually updated it, um, and then when it was created, and who from your login, who created it as well. All right. A um, few more things we have here. You have a comments tab where you can enter any comments for the family. It's just a free field where you can type anything you like. Um, that is a searchable uh, field. Um, also, next you have a photo tab where if you want to do a picture directory, you can store photos here. Um, we don't have a photo on this family. We can easily put one. We just click on add picture and mine's going right to my picture folder. If it doesn't already, then you would need to find where you've stored your pictures. I just choose the picture I want. Um, probably a good idea to name your pictures the name of the people. <laughs> um, or else it might be hard to find them. Um, but it saw that I just added another one, so it's asking if I want to overwrite. Same picture, but I'll say yes. <clears throat> if you've added a picture and you want to put a newer picture, um, you can clear the picture and then go find your new one. Um, but really easy to add a picture. And then the last thing we have here is the other tab. And this is a neat thing. Um, we've had requests for this because sometimes families um, a divorce and a child or children spend time with multiple families or grandparents and parents um, and people want the ability to have a child or a person associated with more than one house. We can now do that. So here we have the Peaks, um, husband and wife, maybe, um, maybe one of them remarried and they have a child that lives with the other parent. We can click um, on this other tab, we can link another child to this family. And that brings up the link additional family members where here we can search for the person we want or we can click the arrow here and find the person. And once we find the person we want to link, then we just click link child to family. And now we see their name here. We could delete here if we made a mistake. Um, we're going to click close. And now if I go back to my family tab, notice Blake Lawrence is now shown with the Peak family as well. And this last column here is our indicates additional family assignments, if any. It's the where they show if we have linked somebody. We see this little house here with an A. This means this is an associated household. It's not their primary house. I can click this little house. Oh, it worked when I did it earlier today. Darn. Um, if I click this little house, it should take me right to the oh. That makes me sad because it really worked this morning. Let me try going back and then maybe forward. It should, if it works properly like it did from this morning, it should take me directly to uh, the Lawrence house where we can see the other household Mr. Lawrence is in. Let's see if we close out a membership. If you need to leave the webinar, um, I'm running over by a little bit. So if you need to leave, I'm nearly near the end and you won't offend me if you leave early. I apologize I'm going over. Again, I have a hard time. Um, with lots of information, I have a hard time sticking to 20 minutes. All right, let's look real quick. I wonder why that worked for me this morning and not this time. All right, slow. Fingers crossed. Ugh. All right, I'm going to have to tell them, tell the programmers that the, the link does not work. But let's go ahead. If I look here, let me show you. That should have taken us right to Blake's household. 
and it did not. Um, but here I went and looked up Blake, and we see he's in his normal primary household with his mom, Erin, uh, Mr. Paul Mitchell, or I'm sorry, another child, Paul Mitchell and Blake Lawrence. And we see here the little house letting us know he is associated with another family, but this is his primary family. Uh, still getting the error when I go that route as well. I apologize. I don't know why that worked. I'm on the same computer as well that I was this morning, but I did pick a different child. So um, the last thing on page 21 is deleting a family. Uh, deleting a family's easy if it will let you. Um, if the family has giving, uh, then you cannot delete them. Let's see if we hit delete family up or left for the Lawrences. It tells us we cannot delete them because they have giving and pledging. Multiple people in the family do. Uh, but let me go ahead and look up myself. We know that we just added me. I have no giving and we should be able to delete my empty house. I haven't even put any individuals in so there's no giving. Um, so to delete somebody I just or a family I click delete and brings up a little window that says delete family Ms. Kelly Ann Pierman gives you a warning here where if this you know is if you if this is somebody that you have a really full record on that's come to the church for a long time you might want to retain that information for your history um, and if so that's what it's telling you here that you can mark them inactive or instead and that way you still retain their record um, if I hit check here and I click yes then this is gone I cannot cannot retrieve this record unless I have a backup of my data that are a store so I click yes and now if we Look, there is no pyramid anymore. I am gone from the database. So, all right. I am at the end of what I wanted to show you today. I apologize for going over almost 10 minutes. Um, I hope I was pretty coherent and you <laughs> I made sense. I tried to stick to the book today instead of going too far off the book and showing you too much not in the book. I tend to try to show you everything. Um, Let's see if there are questions. Somebody said it would be helpful if there were fields for all the cell numbers of everyone in the family. Will this be added at some point? Cell fields are something that doesn't come with the program. Um, I think they added it, though, in version 20. I think it does come. And if you look on the individual record, there is a cell phone field. So you can, for each individual, you can add their own cell phone right on their individual record. That typically isn't something we put for the family. On the family side, that would go on the individual side. Um, but Roska, if you want to double check, I'm pretty sure cell phones, either cell phone or email comes with the program now. They didn't used to, you had to make them. Um, but I'm pretty sure one or the other, if not both, actually come already set up in version 20. But I'm not certain. Um, someone asked, will all my information go? Yes, yes. All your information upgrades and all your members and visitors become people. They're all in the people database. Thank you. Somebody said, I hope you feel better. Thank you. I do feel better. I've n I didn't have a fever or anything. It's just sinus, this weather. You know, 60 degrees one day, 20 the next. Go figure. We're all getting sick. <laughs> um, somebody said, can you download just the membership for version 20 or do you need to get it all? Um, when you install version 20, it's it's an update to your entire, all the modules you own. It's, you know, all or nothing. You can't just say, give me part and not this. Um, when you upgrade to version 20, it upgrades all your modules. <laughs> all right. Um, somebody said, what's the print button next to delete family? That, if you click on that, you can choose to do reports or labels. Um, this little button lets you map an address, and this button will copy the address where you can take it over to Word. Um, reports and labels, that's a whole other half hour hour, so that's why I didn't really go into that, because it's you can do that from the screen, but it's a, an entire function within itself. <laughs> um, I thought somebody, I saw somebody ask about making fields, new fields. Oh, okay, yes, you can still do new fields. That will be talked about tomorrow. Um, right over to the, I keep forgetting, I'm sorry, somebody had asked to use that highlighter, and I'm, I just, I don't use it a lot. Um, that will be discussed in tomorrow's webinar, or they might touch briefly on that, because there's a lot on the individual side. I think they might just show you that it's there. I'm pretty sure I, we might have a class already, or might be doing one in the future on customizing fields, but yes, you can still make fields and stuff. <laughs> and stuff. That wasn't very professional. <laughs> uh, somebody asks, is the giver module separate from the members and visitors? Yes. Um, 
donations is a, an entirely separate module. Let me at least get my clicking tool. Whoops. I'm sorry. I'm not good at getting my highlighter and going back and forth. Here we go. Um, if I bring up just church windows, donations, third thing here on the screen, donations is what replaced um, our older contributions, and it's the, the giving module, and it is an entirely separate module. Your people from the people database show as possible givers, but you can add givers just to donations if you have you know people you don't want to add a record for. Um, but yes, it is a totally separate module from the membership module. Somebody said, will the online help videos be updated to this version? Or is there, will they well? It, take a look at our website. <laughs> um, if you, I always recommend, I know that you can go to new version resources directly. I tend to use the magnifying glass. Pretty sure under, whoops, under beginning. If I just hover on it instead of clicking and I go to new version resources, that's always going to have the most current. So there are already version 20 videos and documents on the website. We started showing uh, previews of version 20 back in October, November. So we have had information up for version 20 for about six months now. <laughs> so yes, there is, there is information for free as well, uh, movies, uh, documents. Uh, if you can't find a document, I always use the magnifying glass. Um, and you can start with, you know, specific. And then if you don't find it, I'd go to a more general term um, or general words. <clears throat> All right. Are there other questions? I see Ross got a whole bunch of those. I don't know if I missed any. They're scrolling by fast. Let me look back up there. Oh, somebody's sad. Oh, I think somebody's sad that the giver module is separate from members and visitors. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's always been a separate module. Membership and contributions is what started when, or what, what was the current thing when I started back in 2007. Um, and donations replaced contributions three to five years ago. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, they've always been separate modules. Now, I, I know we have a few churches. It's rare that I see it, but every once in a while I'll come across a record when somebody calls in and they only own donations, but they don't keep a record of all the things that membership can. Um, so they must not need that because donations, really all you can track about your people are their name, address, and phone number, and an email, and an email because you can email statements. But you don't have the capability of the records where you can, you know, track all the different things and attendance and do uh, mailing labels. I mean, you can do some label capability out of donations, but not as much. 